You see, no, I do not see. Oh, trouble. Oh, quite right, too. Will you let me explain? You're fired. Oh, but he wasn't, Johnny. What have I done? 
You can't do that. Yes, I can do that. You're fired, you're fired, you're all fired. Well, now you listen to yourself. Oh, no, you don't. The contract's the contract. Here, here. Shut up, you. Now listen, Mr. Carlos. Quiet, am I? You wait till you see what the union is. Shut up, shut up. Quiet, quiet. Mr. I don't want to speak of a crop of dollars. Swell people, eh? Will you let me say something? I don't expect to keep it to swell people if you make such a hollow ball. In the college club, there must be one thing, there must be silence. Must not be noise. Must not be noise, must be. Oh. Get out. Get out of my club. Quiet. Oh, oh, but get out of my club. No, 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 I can't have a quiet listen to a radio without half great and under banging on the door and barging into a room. All I can say is it's a pity. But Carlo is... Carlo's getting too big for his boots. I think I have a word with him about it now. Back, come back. It's not safe. Back, back come back. Oh, it's no good for you to cry. You are out on your cheek, Miss Harkins. Then walk oh, and I Carlo, point to my finger and I, I say... I've talked the whole thing Harkins. over with my partner and we decide to say nothing more about it. But I sincerely hope it will not occur again. And now the orchestra will play, Don't lose your temper, baby, Mama doesn't like it. But he's our boss. He pays our wages. By courtesy of him, we eat, remember? Always thinking of your stomach. Well, one of us has to. One day you'll be a fat old man. <laughs> not with you as a partner. You mustn't let Carlo have everything his own way. It's bad for him. But Pat, be reasonable, for goodness sake. Can't you keep both feet on the ground for a couple of minutes? Thanks to you, we get the push from Paganini's. The same again at the Adagio Club. And then the Penguin. And why? Because we're bad? Oh, dear, no. Because little Patsy has a hunch. She must have excitement. Well, for Pete's sake, can't we live without it for a day or two? Pat! Johnny, Johnny, look at this. What's that? If we could find that man... Oh, don't start all that again, haven't but I? But, Johnny, think of the publicity. Pat and Johnny, well-known cabaret act, make daring capture of escaped lunatic. We'd have our photographs in the paper. We'd have every manager in town running as fast as they can. Away from us. We'd be a sensation. That's us. Now, for heaven's sake, stop fooling about. For well, one of these days, I'll... Fooling about? Who's fooling about? <laughs> Followed you from the Gaiety stage door. Silly boy. Give you these. Whatever for? They are to tell you that you are the one I have missed, dear. Are you up here? No fear. Then what are you doing here? We ladies of the Gaiety, as doubtless you have heard, get ropes of pearls from Dukes and Earls, the Dukes of course preferred. But ladies of the Gaiety are humans, I'm told. Are they above a poor man's love, or is it always go? But ladies of the gaiety, our pets the pace of gaiety. By common men, our hearts are never stirred. And so, unless you've got both a title and a yacht, buzz off, you silly blighter, or you'll get the bird. The man at the corner table. Man out there with a beard is the escaped lunatic. What? 
No, that beer's full. And you're crazy. I tell you, I know. Oh, Pat, use your head. My head's all right as long as you don't try and think with it. You're on! Five days a week, it's the same routine. Standing all day in the shop. Sighting my way home at 6.15. So weary, I'm ready to drop. Then on my gas ring, I cook some stew and listen to radio shows. Or read magazines for an hour or two, wishing I had adventures like those. Then once in a while, I have a spree in a ninepenny seat in the flicks, looking at life as it ought to be. If fate didn't play mean tricks, then home again to my lumpy bed, where I keep dull tomorrow out of my head, by dreaming of life as I wish it was, full of glamour, adventure, and fun, because... The lady craves excitement, romance, and thrills, and danger, the sort of thing you see on movie screens. The lady craves excitement to learn if truth is stranger than fiction that you read in magazines. To be a she Dick Barton or a female Pimpernel with nerves of steel plus sex appeal, or oh, wouldn't that be swell? The lady craves excitement and nothing's going to change her. Her heart is restless as the ocean waves. For thrill, she's always the end. She won't leave a stone unturned till she gets the excitement she craves. <laughs> Supposing you and I were alone together by a blue lagoon, no people round for miles. I could wear a cute sarong like Lamour and sing a song. Oh no, perhaps you're not the type for South Sea Isles. Suppose that I am a lovely foreign spy and you're a British agent keen on duty. But I break your iron will and you fall for me until you must choose between your country and my beauty. Then suppose my chief gets wise and he makes me realize I must strip off your disguise for all to see. And so although my heart says no, I must now expose you. So! Well, how was I to know who the real one? Now I ask you, does it look like you are? Well, I'm terribly sorry. Please let me explain. Over the way! Drunk yourself! All right, now. What's up? Well, come on, look, I know. All right, all right, shut up. This woman, she strikes this man, no? Oh, no, 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 no. All right, all right, good, good, good. good. What does she do? She put it there like that. She put his beer. Like it's a garano beer. Look, it's a garano beer. No, his beer, Carlo. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, really, such a fuss. Now, Carlo, I thought... All right, he... all right, you thought. Yes. You think. All of the time, you think. This is the time I think. I think you are finished Funny. with Carlos Club. Get out of Carlos Club. Take your partner. This is the last straw that breaks the Carlos neck. You're finished. You're fired. 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 Get out. All right. He feared they not be false. I'm quite willing to admit that. But I still say he's an escape lunatic. Well, there's no use telling me about it. Why don't you telephone the police? That's exactly what I intend to do. Now, look. Don't you think we're in enough trouble? If you report that old boy to the police and you turn out to be wrong, what do you think he'll do about it? Oh. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. What would he do? Well, I hadn't thought about it either, but I suppose he'll do something. He'll, he'll ask questions in the house or write to the Times or... or... Who is that? Landlord, probably. What does he want? The rent. He's got a nerve coming at this time of night. One of these days he's going to get such a shock. Why, are you thinking of paying him? 
Stop trying to be the funny man in this act, dear. Save it till we get a new job. Well, what's the good of our getting a new job if you go around unbearding innocent customers? He's not an innocent anything. He's a lunatic, a crook, and a dangerous character. <laughs> oh, <laughs> haven't we met somewhere before? Regrettably, yes. A most unfortunate occurrence. How do you do? I'm afraid the whole thing was a mistake. It arose from a misunderstanding which arose... My dear boy, think no more about it. Life is full of mistakes. Some of them turn out happily, others turn out distressfully. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Madam, allow me to present myself. I am Septimus K. Peterson, the eminent painter of historic subjects. No doubt you have heard of me. Oh, yes, of course. Um, won't you sit down, Mr. Peters? Peterson! Oh, Peterson? A drink, Mr. Peterson? Yes, an old got whiskey. One night ale. Search the four corners of the globe and not until tonight have I set eyes on so perfect a model for my Anne Boleyn. Your what? For my Anne Boleyn. Oh. Oh, yes, of course. For the last five years, I've been engaged in collecting authentic data for the reproduction of the tragic scene of the execution of Anne Boleyn. Until tonight, there was only one thing lacking to proceed with the great work. And that was Anne Boleyn. I cannot begin to tell you how closely you resemble her. Before or after? I am prepared to offer you the sum of 200 pounds to pose for my picture of her execution. 200 pounds? 300 then. Let us not demean the grandeur of this occasion by quibbling over trifles. It is Anne Boleyn you intend to paint. Of course. Who else? Well, for 300 pounds, it's usually Lady Godiva. And why, pray, should I have the least desire to paint Lady Godiva? Take no notice of the boy, Mr. Peterson. He's very young. Very young. However, to return to business, I shan't be requiring your services until tomorrow. You see, before I can start, I must have the original block and the original axe, which were used for Anne Boleyn's execution. You do see that, don't you? Oh, yes, we do see that, don't we? Uh, the original block and axe. Aren't they in the Tower of London or something? Uh, for a time, that presented a grave problem. Oh, yes, it, it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> but you overcame it. Almost. Fortunately, it happens that some friends of mine have a considerable influence with the governor of the Tower. And through their good offices, I'm hoping to have them on loan for a few weeks. Isn't it splendid? Splendid, isn't it? It's made my day. Not only that, but we're going to get the actual jewels and the original dress she wore for her execution. Oh, she, she dressed up for the occasion, did she? Of course, of course, of course. It was something of an event in her life. <laughs> yes, well, you don't get executed every day, do you, dear? How do you do? How do you do? Well, won't you come in? Good evening. Good evening. I'm Julia Lassane. I do hope you won't mind the calling like this, but I was worried about Mr. Peterson. Oh, not at all. Oh, hello, Septimus. Wherever did you get to? I've been looking for you everywhere. Perhaps I ought to explain. No need, no need. I've told them everything already. Oh, have you? Well, now, come along, Septimus. You'll be much better when you get outside in the air. But, Julia, she's my Anne Boleyn. Yes, yes, I know. Now, you come and talk to Boris about it. He's waiting for you in the car. Well, I'll be back in a moment. But this is outrageous, Julia. Boris will be terribly I don't care Septimus. a fig for Boris. As a matter of fact, I don't care a fig for you either. But we care for you, Septimus. We're going to look after you and see but you don't get into any trouble. We don't I... want anything to happen to you. But I'm going to... Oh, you see? I was right. He is. He's what? The lunatic. Yes, he certainly is a lunatic. Oh, but he's silly. He's a criminal as well. Criminal? Criminal, my foot. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't start all that again. I tell you, there's something very fishy about it, and I'm going to ring Scotland Yard now. I really... 
really am terribly sorry you've been bothered like this. But I'm afraid he's quite... Uh... Oh, yes, we could see that. It is rather obvious, isn't it? You see, he imagines himself to be a great artist. I, I suppose he told you. Yes, he did. Did he... Um... Did he tell you anything else? Well, he No, didn't he just mentioned that he was a very great artist. Didn't he mention painting the scene of Anne Boleyn's execution? Ah, as a matter of fact... As a matter of fact, he just said, I rather resembled Anne Boleyn. Oh, well, there's no harm done, is there? You see, I know he's been looking for a model for Anne Boleyn for some time, and I rather thought he might have offered you some remuneration to pose for it. Of course, had he done so, I'd have compensated you for any disappointment you might have had. Well, I... I must get back to Septimus. I don't like leaving you for too long, you know. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, good night. What's all the hush-hush about? The moment I set eyes on that girl, I had a hunch. She's up to something, and I think I know what it is. Now listen, Anne Boleyn, you tuck your head underneath your arm and let me do the thinking for a change. I tell you... That man's no more loony than I am. All that stuff about Anne Boleyn's jewels was pretty significant. I think they're after the crown jewels. And where does old face fungus come in? I haven't worked that out yet, but he comes in all right. I expect he grew that beard to disguise himself as a beef eater. Of course. And what now? I'm going to phone Inspector James immediately. What? Inspector James. He'll remember me. Sure, sure. He'll remember you. But it wasn't a very good introduction, was it? Didn't he get mixed up in the fire hose you turned on last boat race day? That's what I mean. He'll remember me. Hello? Scotland Yard? Oh, could I speak to Inspector James, please? A couple of phonies. Huh? Oh, all right. I'll wait. I'll fix them. Them? Surely you don't think that lovely, charming, sincere girl who was in here just now and was so nice to that raving lunatic is a crook. Really? Think they caught on? I don't know about the girl, but the boy's a dope. Want me to fix it? Oh, Boris, don't be a fool. He said he told them everything, but I tried them out. They hadn't a clue what I was talking about, as far as I could see. Are you all right, Septimus? No, I am not. I'm very angry with you, Julia. Oh, Septimus. What about the block and the act you promised me? I'm still waiting for them. Don't you worry, you'll have them as soon as it's humanly possible. But you said that last week. And what about the jewels? Here, move your head back or you get that thing mixed up with the gears. It gets bombier every day. Now look, we'll have to work pretty fast. After you've dropped me, you get back and keep an eye on those two. Sure, sure. Hmm? Not there. Oh, would you leave a message for him, please? Tell him the fire hose girl, yes, that's right, the fire hose girl, he'll know who you mean, has something of vital importance to tell him. Ask him to meet me at Carlo's Club tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. You will? That's fine. Thank you. Good night. Well, that's that. And what is the idea behind all that? To begin with, we've been fired from Carlo's. You leave Carlo to me, I can handle Carlo. Leave everything to me. Have faith. Oh, ye gods, listen to the woman. You could put all the faith I have in you under a microscope and it still wouldn't be visible. And this is the man who once said he really cared. I do, but there's a limit. Oh, how fickle is the heart of man. I am not fickle. I still think the world of you, but... But what? Well, what I mean is, as a detective, you're a washout. Your hunches are rather poor. And as a diplomat, when things are sticky and need glossing over, you're, well... And what? Well, you're not very good, darling. Let's face it. Tomorrow, you will eat those words. Tomorrow, I shall handle Carlo gently, firmly, and diplomatically, until I have him eating out of my hand. And Carlo, we realized you were overexcited at the time and didn't know what you were doing, so we've agreed to let bygones be bygones and say no more about it, eh? Bygones. Bygones. I don't know this by guts, but what I know is better for me to pay you one week's money and you work for nothing than you work for some things. Tonight you work for the last time. Then your contract you to finish and you're finished. But Mr. Carlo, you... Quiet, you, 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 mind you. First you turn on the radio and what happens? Just one hell of a noise. Then you turn off the radio and what happens? There's a complete silence. Shut up, you. Keep your big fat nose out of my business. I speak to the mad woman here. She, she, she's in the nuts. Now, Carlo, we're not the slightest bit vindictive. And we know you can't help being a silly little man. So... If are you yeah. listening to me? Miss Harvey, is it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Inspector, the eggs, the butter, the milk. 
Oh, Inspector, how nice to see you again. I asked you to come down uh, from... Uh, Inspector, somebody she's been telling you lies. And anybody who's been telling you such lies, she's not been telling you the truth. Cigarette, Inspector. The eggs and the bacon, Inspector, this is lies, all lies. You know, Carlo, I'm an honest man trying to make a living. The butter is not for my restaurant, it's for my starving bambinos. Five, six, seven maybe. Inspector, look, Inspector. Who's been telling you I'm in the black market? It's an Esco, no? Oh, he's a liar, that one. He's uh, dirty lies. I buy no more from him. This is much too dear anyway. Inspector, look, you must not believe an Esco. He's a dirty crook, he's a dirty liar. You don't believe. Carlo, I am an honest man. I can buy stuff like this from an Esco. Not Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> Not Carlo. <laughs> no, no. What the blazes are you talking about? You, you come to question me, no? No, I didn't. But it seems like a very good idea. And, uh, then why? Why why you come to Carlo's club? Why? But to see Miss Hargreaves. Oh. Oh, shoot. Now then, you two, what is it this time? Oh, you see, Inspector, last night a very funny thing happened. Yes, she tried to pull off an old man's beard. Oh, yes. And afterwards he came round to my flat, opened the door, walked in, and without a word of warning offered me 300 pounds to pose for him as Anne Boleyn. As who? Anne Boleyn, you know, the girl that lost her head. Huh. Shouldn't be a difficult role for you. Ah, but the significant thing about it is this. He started talking about the crown jewels in the Tower of London, and he said he was going to borrow them for me to wear in this picture he wants me to pose for. But according to him, there are some other people after the crown jewels, but he wasn't quite sure how they were going to work it. And do you mean to tell me that you brought me all the way down from the yard just to listen to this gibberish? Oh, I can assure oh, you it's dare you. I have a good mind to charge you for contempt. Oh, but you can't do that, can he? No, no, it wouldn't be fair. Besides, I haven't finished explaining. While he was talking to us, a very suspicious-looking woman came in. Oh, yes. Inspector. She was very attractive. But she started oh. talking about the crown jewels as well. But I was a little bit too clever for her. I wasn't a little bit too Hello? That's it, Julia? Yes. I uh, right about that, too, Julia. I just see them talking to a flat To what? A rasa. Talk English, will you? But I am talking English. A dick. A detective. Well, I don't know what the old boy could have told him. I can't get it out of him. Oh, he's sulking like a schoolboy at the moment. And Unless we got the stuff for him, he's not going to cooperate. You leave that to me. Now, listen. You keep tabs on him until tonight. Then meet me at Muggsy's and we'll figure something out. Don't. Do anything silly. Eh? Who, me? Uh, do I ever act silly? Now listen, Julia. Uh, oh. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Allow me. Now, don't say thank you and I'll get a surprise. Thank you. Oh, I've said it. One large whiskey, please, and uh, one lemon squash. I don't like girls who drink, do you? Oh, no, no, I don't. Does the sheeting? Oh, yes, rather. Mm. Oh, drink? No, no. I got the same impression myself. I wondered when I met you last night what an attractive man like you could see a girl like that. <laughs> I uh, hope you don't mind me mentioning it. No, not at all. <laughs> I hope she remembers she's on in ten minutes. <laughs> Same again, please, Jack. Large one for me. 
I'm afraid you'll think this is rather an old line, but you know, when I first met you, I had a distinct impression I'd seen you before. Did you? You haven't worked in the films by any chance? Oh, oh no. Daddy would never have allowed me to parade myself in public. Of course not. You see, ever since I was a tiny little girl, I've led a very sheltered life. And then after poor Mummy died, Daddy was both Mummy and Daddy to me. Yes, of course. And then, a few months ago, poor Daddy went to join poor Mummy. Poor Daddy. Now I'm all alone. Well, not quite alone. <laughs> Let's have another drink. Same again, please. Did you smoke? I don't. Well, neither do I. Jack, where's my drink? that you live in that great, great big house all by yourself? Yes, well, all by myself. Well, that's shocking, shocking, that is. And I'm so afraid of the dark. Oh. I'm simply dreading that long drive in front of me. Well, if you wouldn't think me too presumptuous, I will drive you home. Johnny, would you really? Wouldn't be putting me in a lot of trouble? No trouble at all. You all right to drive? Well, of course I'm all right, as long as the road goes in the same direction as... <laughs> As the uh, road goes in the same direction as the car, I shall drive you home. I can drive and I shall drive you home. Oh, it's my turn to drive. No, 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 it's all right. We're here now. Here? Mm -hmm. Oh. during the Wars of the Roses. Oh. oh. What were they playing? They won it. In battle. Oh. Well, all's fair in love and war, I always say. Now, you make yourself at home, Johnny. I'll get you a little drink. No, but I don't want to drink, thank you very much. Oh, yes, you do. Oh. Well, a very small one. Get my lemonade. Oh, yes, your lemonade. Hmm. What was that? That was a kiss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard something. So did I. Perhaps it's mice. Oh, no, I should be terrified. There's nothing to worry about. Remember, I am with you. Oh, yes. I know. You know, I'd give an awful lot to see old Pat's face if she could see us now. Ooh. Would you? Uh. What was that? Listen. Sounds to me like a 
returning husband. Oh, it's all right. It's only Boris. Who's Boris? He's Mr. Peterson's chauffeur. You'll like him. He's one of the nicest, kindest men you've ever met. <laughs> of mine. A friend of a friend of ours. Oh? How do you do? I've been hearing such nice things about... Ah, very pleased to meet you. Uh, lend us a hand with this trunk, will you? Afraid this one won't be much use. Oh. Do you mind? Oh, it'll be a pleasure. <laughs> I shall be a minute. Thank you. Wait a minute, what have you got in this thing? A couple of bodies? No, only one. <laughs> <laughs> only one. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> You said it was a body. But you were joking, weren't you? Who is it? Your girlfriend. Pat? That's right. Oh, well, Pat! You mean to say that I hope... You mean to say that Pat's in this box? Yes, that's what I mean to say. Julia, Johnny.
Peterson's holding out on us. He wants to deliver the block, the axe, the jewels before he comes across with the stuff. The girl's got an appointment with him, and if she doesn't turn up, there'll be more complication. Now listen, you go up to town and see Muggsy. Well, he said he won't have the jewels till tomorrow. That's what he said. He told me tonight or tomorrow it's worth a try anyway. We've got to get it away tonight. Why not give Muggsy a ring? Oh, it's no use doing that. He'll only put us off. You go up and try scaring him first. Then offer to raise him a bit. Take my car. It's around the front. All right. I'll see what I can do. Got that job done yet? Maybe I have. It all depends. Oh, listen, Mumsy. I'm listening, Boris. You were about to say. <laughs> we don't want to quarrel, do we, Mumsy? Eh? Of course not, Boris. All right. I'll raise your ten quid. Now we understand each other. Smackers. Even at that, I'm practically giving them to you. There we are, Boris. Did you ever see anything so beautiful? It does my soul good to look at them. Well, I go. Have you got a sack to put them in? A sack? Yeah. What about a block and the eggs? Now, that presents a little difficulty. It's purely a question of authenticity, Boris. You see, I've discovered that Anne Boleyn was not beheaded with an axe at all. She was executed with a sword. As a matter of fact, I've got it all here. According to this, Henry VIII sent for a special executioner from France. So what? The old fool wants an axe? An axe he'll get. Oh, no, I could never allow that, Boris. Not for a moment. It would uh, offend my artistic sensibilities. And it states quite definitely here that... All right, all right. Give us the perishing sword then. Now I hope he cuts his own blooming head off. Thank you, Boris. Purely a question of authenticity, you know. Okay. Okay, wrap it up. And uh, how are all your other little interests? coming along. Well, that'll be all right once I get the stuff down to the house. We're shipping the lot over to the continent tonight, providing the tide's all right. But, Inspector, I heard him telling this Muggsy person that he was going to get the stuff over to the continent tonight. Do you mean to tell me that you actually saw the crown jewels? Yes, through the doorway. Don't talk such rubbish. You say that you were taken down to a house by the river. Why, you don't even know where the house is. No, I know, but that shouldn't be difficult to find. It's got a clock tower with gargoyles on it. But what? Gargoyles. And you expect me to send half the police in my division looking for gargoyles on a clock tower? Yes, I do. You do? Certainly. And if you don't do something, I am going to the commissioner. Now, I don't want to take a step like that, because I feel if I can give any information that would lead to a little promotion for you, well, I'd rather do you a good turn than the commissioner. That's very, very kind of you. Not at all. The commission has probably got all the promotion he needs anyway. But if he found out that you had ignored some vital information brought to you by a member of the public, what do you think he'd say? Now, this is what I propose to do. I'm going to find out the name of that house, and then I'm going down to contact Johnny. Is he that pinhead boyfriend of yours? Yes, that's right. What did you call him? Pinhead. Oh. I thought it was something rude. Anyway, if you all have, say, 20 or 30 police standing by, I'll get in touch with you as soon as I know where you're to send them. 
You're sure the 20 or 30 will be enough? Oh, yes, I should think so. Good. Well, good. That's settled then. Thank you very much. I'll see you later. Good night. Good night. That last drink must have had a kick. Oh, steady boy. I wonder what happened to old Boris. Boris! Boris! Boris? there talking to you and then and and then I feel as though I've had a hit on the head C can you see a bump no left a bit oh yes oh it's tender that's it Big lug, say I don't like being given the run around. No, I'm sure you don't. Mind you, I ain't saying anything against Boris, but any guy what asks a lady to meet him someplace and then he don't show up, well, he ain't no gentleman. What do you say? I quite agree. Sure, sure you do. Oh, well, I guess I have to make my own way down to the house. Gosh darn it, it's a tarnation nuisance. Say, would you believe it? I've been down to that darn house as many times as there are Mormons in Salt Lake City and I just can't remember the address. Address. Well, that presents no great difficulty. I'll write it down for you. You will? Oh, thanks. I understand from Boris, the old gentleman's been quite troublesome lately. The old gentleman? Yes, Peterson. Oh, sure, sure, yes. Boris told me. Still, I've no doubt Boris is capable of handling him. Anything can happen in a great big house like that, can't it? Yeah. There we are. You can get a train from Waterloo every half an hour and a taxi outside the station that will take you right to the house itself. Easy, isn't it? I didn't reckon it was going to be so easy. Well, Muggsy, thanks a lot. I'll be seeing you. Hey, Julia. What's the matter with you? She's gone. Who's gone? The girl. What? I don't get on to me, Julia. You're an idiot. I thought you said you'd put it on for hours. Yes, but that was hours ago. We'd better look oh, for Oh, shut up and let me think for a minute. It's Peterson I'm worrying about. I've got it. Go and fetch the jewels and we'll take them up to him. But listen, Julia. You went, I tell you, and he's not talking to me. Everything in order. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I must say, Boris, 
I'm a bit disappointed about the axe. Well, there you are. They used a flaming sword instead of a perishing axe. So what could we do about it? As you say, Boris, we can't do very much. Well, well. Anne Boleyn shouldn't be very long now. Uh, as soon as she arrives, we'll show her up to you. Good, good, very good. Now, leave me. Johnny, how on earth did you get tied up again? Search me. Do you know what I think? I, no, do you ever? I'm beginning to think those two aren't to be trusted. No, what made you think that? Well, I was having a drink, minding my own business, when all of us... You wouldn't have dressed up like that. Put this around you quickly. Look as if you're tied up and try and look unconscious. That shouldn't be difficult for you. Well, what are you going to do? Get in here. Well, what's the plot? Shh, never mind. What should I do with these? Put them in the trunk. I thought you said she got away. Well, that's funny. I could have sworn that you... Oh, you're getting a bad old Peterson. Give me these. I'll attend to them. Don't stand there gaping. How long have we got to wait for the tide? Oh, about half an hour. Have you got everything? Petrol? Oil? Well, I left a couple of drums in the car. Go and get them, you bastard idiot. I don't want to stand here all night. Nice work. Now what? I'm going up to see Peterson. Peterson? What the blame? Well, Peterson's up at the house now. How did you find out? Well, do you remember that card he gave? It's, um, oh, my bag. My bag. Where's it? Oh, come on, get that. Hello. Here's the card he gave us. And here's where we are now. The two addresses are the same. Now, I found out that Peterson's here. He's got the jewels, and I'm going to play up to him with this Amberlynn nonsense until the police arrive. Oh, well, when will that be? Just as soon as you do as I tell you, I want you to find a telephone kiosk. Phone Inspector James and tell him to hurry up. Oh, don't forget to tell him my address. But, but, but Pat, Pat, don't I... lose any time. Pat and Johnny, cabaret act. Daring capture. Courageous Phone Inspector James, Pat and Johnny, cabaret act. Daring capture. Don't lose any time. Don't lose any time. Oh. Oh, Pat, the door's locked! Pat! Pat! Oh, good. Oh, Inspector James, how? What would Dick Barton do? My dear Anne, I can't tell you how pleased I am to see you. Thank you very much. You see, everything's ready. The jewels, the dress, 
And now, Anne herself, ready to expiate her sins on the block. Oh. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, very gay. <laughs> Can't you just imagine how Anne must have felt? Yes, I imagine I can. And now, my dear, now for the pièce de résistance. Mm -hmm. My word, you're going to enjoy this. Good. Isn't it beautiful? An execution dress. Oh. Isn't it exquisite? Uh, put it on, my dear, put it on. And then, when you've got it on... Yes? The jewels. Oh, I wear them as well, do of I? Of course. Now, hurry along, now, hurry along. Inspector James, Inspector James, can you hear me? Can you hear me? What the devil's going on? Who is it? Don't know, sir. Some crazy bloke in our wavelength. Calling Inspector James. Calling Inspector James. Are you there, James? Johnny here. Interference is being experienced on this wavelength. Please rectify. Calling Inspector James, you flat-footed old slipper. This is Johnny in an open boat like Casabianca. Terrible things are happening. Come at once. Hurry, hurry. Bring a posse, whatever that is. Bring two. Please justify interference on this wavelength. Evening's operation jeopardized. Tell the fool to get off the air. Hello? Hello? Call in. Uh, Johnny, get off the air. Hello, hello? Hello? Calling all cars? Hello, hello? 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 Can you hear me? It's... Oh. How do you make this thing work? You got it plugged in wrong. Hey, get up a minute. Does it function? No, it's all right now. Thanks. Hello, hello. Hello, Inspector James. Switch up. Call in uh, Johnny. I can't switch off, you goat. I must get in touch with Inspector James. Listen, this is serious. This whole joint is surrounded by crooks. The crown jewels stolen, being smuggled away tonight in this boat. I've got an unconscious woman here lying in a box full of old oil paintings. On my right binnacle or barnacle, or whatever you call it. Inspector James, do your duty. It's no use, sir. Just a second. Did he mention paintings? Paintings? He mentioned everything he could lay his tongue to, if you ask me. Let's speak to him. Switch in. Brunette, and they had to eat. Stop here if you've heard it. Hello, Johnny. Did you mention paintings? Pictures? James calling. Did you say paintings? No, it was a real blonde and a real brunette. They weren't painted. Well, not over much. Well, you see, they were poor, very, very poor, and they had to eat very, very much. And, uh... What did you say about paintings? Oh, yes, we've got hundreds of paintings here. There's one of the Mona Lousy, or whatever you call it, and another of an old Dutch mill, and, 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 oh. Uh, uh, oh, yes, here, here's one of a girl. Phew, not bad. Put the children away while I describe this one, Inspector. It's indescribable. Oh, and here's one. Ah, here we are. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I, 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 I'd say it was a Botticelli-type picture. Three lovely girls um, having a bathe in a pool. It's quite the bottiest jelly I ever saw. They're wearing uh, earrings. That is all over. Gosh, they're the ones we're after. Had half the police force in the country looking for them for weeks, and these two nitwits find them first go. I can't believe it, but for Pete's sake, let's get there. Listen, Johnny. Listen a moment. Where are you? What is it? I've told you 15 times I'm at Oakley Court, Thames Side, Middlesex. Hold the fort. I'll be right with you. Now switch off. Oh, no, you don't. You don't catch old Johnny like that. I'm going to keep talking on this thing until you get here. And the same to you. 
Have you ever heard the story of the two beautiful blondes? We'll forget about the brunette. It makes things so much simpler. Once with the Wardens. I'm sure Anne must have had quite a lot to say to them. Last messages to Henry and so forth. I could tell him what to do with his gout, couldn't I? Anything appropriate you can think of to help you into the atmosphere. Meanwhile, I'm going along to change myself. Oh, are you taking part in this too? Of course. I have my little part to play, you know. Uh, I won't be long. Uh, uh. How'd you do? Aerial in, to aerial out, earth in, earth out. And now, my dear, I'm going to explain to you why I'm taking all this trouble to get everything right for this occasion. But this is an executioner's outfit. Wait a minute, what is this? Don't you see? I am the executioner. And I am Anne Boleyn. Of course. Isn't it wonderful for me? It's going to be heaven for me. Eventually, my dear, eventually. Hmm? Of course, everybody thinks I'm mad. You don't think I'm mad, do you? I don't think anything. You see, it's all because my ancestor, Waldo de Barberac Peterson, was such a botcher. He was no good. A botcher? He was engaged specially by Henry VIII to execute Anne Boleyn, and what happened? He made a mess of the job. Ah, but the result was the same. That's not the point. He made a frightful mess of the job. As a result, no Peterson was ever asked to perform another execution. And the shame of it. Ever since I was old enough to understand, my lifelong ambition has been to remove this blot on my family escutcheon. How do you propose to do that? Isn't it obvious? I must perform a perfect execution myself. Now, my dear, in that moment has at last arrived. Oh, my goodness! I thought you'd be thrilled. You don't mean what I think you mean, I... Do you see how wrong people are to accuse me of being mad when I have a perfectly logical reason for what I propose to do? Now, just you wait there a minute while I make a rough sketch of the position I want you to take up before I deliver that nice, clean sweep. That's going to redeem my ancestor's blunder. Just to make yourself comfortable. Don't go away. Get somebody else. I don't want to play. You mean you don't want to be Anne Boleyn? No, does that strike you as odd? But my dear, the principal role. Yes, but I look better with a head. Nonsense. No, it's so useful for putting my hat on and singing. Silly, silly girl. No, not honestly, to some other day, eh, tomorrow or something. But why? Well, because I don't feel well. Honestly, I feel shocking. I've got an awful headache. Oh, really. but I've got the perfect cure for that. <laughs> <laughs> Before connecting up supplies, ensure... Calling if I said go away. Oh, how did you get here? Someone, the party's over. Oh. Take that chunk of beef off the deck. Uh, look in that box. Oh, I might glad to see you. I thought you were never going to. Easy now. Hey, oh, come, on, come on, lady. Come on. 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 Come
fight till you do the rest of your own friends. I will not have a couple of cooks. I know, I know, we know all of them. Now, will you listen to me? You're going to get into very serious trouble over this. Just wait till Inspector James gets here. He'll tell you who I am. He knows me. Ah, here he is now. Well, you infernal, blithering young jackanapes, and what the devil have you been up to this time? Oh, there you are. I told you he knew me. <laughs> you did say it was three of them to pick up, sir. Not this one. Release him. There's another one around somewhere. He's got to be found. He's the most dangerous of the lot. Where's that girlfriend of yours? Oh, she's upstairs somewhere with the old boy who paints. <laughs> nice old boy, mind you. I think he's a bit loco. What's his name? Peterson. Peterson? He's the man we're looking for. That girl will get her head cut off one of these days. Come on. You've had a lucky escape. We've been on the track of these fellows for the last six months. We've been stealing priceless old masters from country houses and getting them over to the continent. There'll be a nice reward for your part in all this. Congratulations. You found everything. I saved the crown jewels. Oh. Oh, you're a wonderful girl, darling. Oh. It's nice to be rich, Johnny. Fancy there being a reward of 500 pounds. You're a very clever girl, darling. If you play a card right, you'll help me yet. That's big of you, dear. Mighty big of you. Yeah, it's only for you, Miss Frank. <laughs> Fun card. Oh, that's yeah, very gracious of you, Carla. Is it flat? Oh, oh you can very best. I must say, it's jolly nice to be leading a peaceful life for a change. Hey, what about my hunches now? No, but it wasn't really the right hunch, was it, darling? No, but he was a lunatic and he was a crook. Yes, but he wasn't the escaped killer with the scar, the man whose picture we saw in the newspaper. Still, never mind, never mind. Here we are, you and I, living in the lap of luxury. And all because a man walked in here wearing a beard and I... <sighs> <laughs> Johnny, look. <laughs> no, Johnny, 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 don't do that. He's looking. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but something about my appearance seems to amuse you. Would you please have the courtesy to explain? I'm terribly sorry. It was rather rude. <laughs> that was my reaction. I really must apologize, but you see, it really was the most amazing coincidence, you see. Yes, yes. you see, we've just had an incredible series of adventures, and all because a man walked in here. Very a and I think pulled it. You pulled the man's beard? <laughs> it really was frightfully funny. You see, she thought he was an escaped lunatic wearing a false beard. <laughs> it was real! <laughs> you thought he was an escaped lunatic? 